and as he's talking in his ear, he's like, you need to relax. Uh, also, I already told Harmony that you're not yeah. really a detective and she's not very happy with you. And he kind of releases him and he says, no, pick those up. <laughs> Referring to his glasses. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's a, it's a great scene. Harry wants to stick around because he's got the screen test and Perry kind of breaks that news to him as well that they're not really taking you seriously. You were just a... Uh... It was kind of... Yeah, it was like you you were like the new guy, like a lure to get Colin yeah. Farrell to drop in his... He wanted too much money. Yes, he wanted too much money. So they were low, they lowballed him essentially with this Harry as a new actor who was like this fresh face that nobody knows yeah. and... You know, basically threatening Colin Farrell a little bit. Yeah, so he, he tells them there's nothing for you here. These guys, they're going to be after you. You don't have, a, you're not going to have an acting job. You need to take off. So he's, he's ready to go. And then he, he spies one of Harmony's friends in the airport. Wants to know where she is and then goes to talk to her. And she's really not happy with him when he shows up and he's trying to explain himself. And she tells him to leave, and she slams the door. <laughs> and there's a, a funny bit where he loses his finger, because mm -hmm. he had it in the door jam, and she slammed the door on his finger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she says, hey, did I just, did I just uh, slam the door on your finger? Did I just cut it off? And he says, yeah. And he's like, oh, it's, it's down there. I don't want to see it. You need to pick it up put it on ice right now, please. <laughs> he's just, like, so annoyed. It's not so much that it hurt, it's just... Annoyed that he lost the finger, so they he goes to the hospital and there's a pretty gross shot of them reattaching that finger. It's all orange and <laughs> weird, man. Yeah, that's a huge phobia of mine for sure. Oh, and it, every time I go out the side garage door at my house, that thing slams really hard if the wind is blowing. Uh -huh. I always prop it. If I'm going out there for two seconds to throw the trash out, I always prop that door because I'm afraid that I'm going to be coming through that door or reaching for something and then the door is going to slam on my my hand and I'm going to lose a finger or two. So he, he loses the finger, they reattach it at the hospital, and then uh, Harmony had to leave because she's working at a party. So they, they go to a party. So they, the Harmony says, hey, I have something to show you. You know, come by, come by this party. And what she shows them is a movie that was made of these detective novels that she used to be into. Mm -hmm. And it's Harlan Dexter is the actor, the main actor in the detective, uh, in the, the movie version of the detective novels. And she says, or this, I tried telling my sister that this was a real dad because their father was abusive. Mm -hmm. So Perry's there. There's, there's another great bit where Harry's trying to talk to Harmony and he's trying to explain himself. <laughs> and she's not having it. And she says, oh, every, everyone here who hates Harry, raise, raise your hand. And everyone, everyone at the party raises their hand. And then Val Kilmers comes in and says... He says something that they're all obedient to. And someone oh, says, fuck you, like yep. off screen. And, and there's a glass that gets thrown and he just ducks it. He says, uh, they're all obedient bitches too or something. <laughs> like, like very snarky. And he just ducks out of the they're he like, ducks <laughs> Fuck you. They throw some like champagne <laughs> glass. <laughs> and he just ducks it as he's walking <laughs> towards them. Yeah, they're, they're watching. They watch the movie. And they see Harlan Dexter. And then Perry has to split because he has a, a surveillance in MacArthur Park. So he takes off. Harmony goes about doing her job. And that's when Harry gets confronted by these two guys who happen to be the same guys that were at the lake. Mm -hmm. Saw him. Obviously dumped the body in his hotel room. And there was a really funny... There's a really funny exchange between the three of them. Excuse me. That's soda, man. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize to your listeners. There's a really funny exchange between the three of them where one of them says, oh, here we are, Ike, Mike, and Mustard. <laughs> and Harry just says, what does that mean? <laughs> That's just some random shit. Like, what does that mean? 
And even his partner's like, oh, I'm with him on this. Like, what does that mean? He says, oh, like lots of people say that here all the time. He says, where? The 1942 club? <laughs> and while, while they're arguing with each other, Harry tries to get up and run away and they, they push him back down. And they fucking dis- dislocate his finger. Yeah, they're like, they're talking, they're talking shit to him, and then they, they grab his hand and just wrench it, and it happens to be the hand that he lost the finger on. <laughs> and immediately, they, I don't know if they, I don't think it, they tore it off. It started to detach. Because because yeah. he says later on, oh, like, my finger's hanging by a thread here. But they, they wrench his hand, and he, he's like, oh, that's my hand, I just got my finger fixed. And then all the blood starts coming through on the, the bandage. And they tell him, you know, it's it's time to go. It's time to leave, so... They're gonna go take off. Uh, he finds Harmony again. Harmony's gonna drive him to the hospital. And he's got his... He's got his hand resting in the a liquor glass. <laughs> yeah, to catch the blood. <laughs> as she's driving, and as she's driving him to the hospital, she sees the two guys. So she starts following them. And says, "Hey, we're just gonna go follow these guys really quick, and then, and then we'll we'll go take you to the hospital." So where these guys end up is MacArthur Park, and she puts two and two together and says, "Oh, they're they're after Perry. This mm-hmm. is the stakeout that Perry's on." Mm-hmm. Perry happens to be following a pink hair a girl with pink hair, and then these two guys are are looking out and following them. So Harmony pulls over, says, "Hey, can you drive yourself to the hospital? I have to go warn Perry." She grabs the gun that that Harry had that he found in the room and takes off. And as as she's trying to to look for Perry, the the girl with the pink hair knows that she's being followed. Tries to send a signal to the two guys, and one of the guys confronts Harmony. Tries to I think choke her to death. Yeah. I think that was his intention was to. He kill was gonna her. kill her. Yeah. And she manages to get the best of him, gives him a good kick in good the balls, knee in the, knee in the balls, and then uh, see and uh, right there she gets up and with her weapon and she's gonna shoot him. Yeah, she thinks about killing him, and she ha- and she hesitates and and leaves him, walks away, and you know something happens because of that. Yeah. So she's she's watching out for Perry. Mm-hmm. And it looks like Perry's about to to get it, because the other guy is, is following him now. Oh, yeah, with the car. Yeah. yeah. And she tries to run and hop a fence or hop over something, and she falls and trips and then loses the gun, and the gun ends up going off. But that, that warns Perry. Mm-hmm. The gunshot warns Perry, and just as he turns around, the guy tries to hit him with the car. He's able to dive out of the way. Yeah. Then the girl with the pink hair is startled too, and uh, the so this other the second hitman is is gonna have like a showdown with Perry, and then the hitman is gunned <laughs> down by the by the the, the roach coach. Yeah, the roach coach uh, <laughs> dude. Who just like he's so annoyed. He's like, you goddamn cocksucker monsters or and something he, like he that. He shoots him about <laughs> half like, a dozen times. Yeah, just like, shoots him dead. <laughs> <laughs> and the pink-haired girl... Who goes, is uh, Shannon... Shannon Sassamon. Yeah. yeah. She was the original drummer for Warpaint. Yes. Because she's uh, yeah. related to Jenny Lee. And, yeah. Half-sisters. Half yeah, her half-sisters uh, in the band. Shannon Sassamon, who was in... Uh, She's in so much stuff, man. She was in the Rules of Attraction. Uh huh. She was in Sinister. One of the two. S- Sinister two, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. she was good in that. The lead, yeah, she's good. She was the girl with the pink hair. Uh, and she she goes running across the street, trying to get out of there. Sees a, a car door open, keys still in the car, so she gets in and takes off, and that happens to be the car that Harry's passed out in the back seat. Mm-hmm. So she, she goes to uh, to her house. Harry wakes up, wanders into the house, and then hears voices. So he he uh, dives underneath the bed. I should I should say 
I think his finger came totally detached at that point because it was a shot of him putting it in the, the bowl of ice. Yeah. <laughs> Puts the finger in the bowl of ice. And then he go he goes and hides under the bed because he hears the voices, mm -hmm. and it's the the other guy. The the other yeah, guy who wasn't killed by Harmony yeah. has now found the pink haired girl, right? Yep. He's in the house, and uh, she knows him, and she's like, "Oh, uh, I got so scared with what happened earlier, and I talked to your boss, and." Uh, and he's, you know, this hitman's reassuring her. He's like, don't worry, I already talked to him. Everything's going to be fine. And she's like, you promise? And he goes, yeah, I promise. And then he shoots her twice while Harry's still under that the bed that they're talking on. And the bullet goes through the bed. Yeah, too. you see, yeah, the, the feathers or something, yep. right? Um, and her, her body kind of drops. She's still alive. And she's facing Harry. And yeah, she, she sees him. him. And she kind of, uh, she mumbles... Who are you? As uh, as she's dying, and he's trying to like keep her from, you know, spoiling his cover. Yeah. He puts her, his hand on her, his finger on her mouth and stuff, and then and then she passes right in front of him, and he's like super disturbed by it, and uh, which is you know, circles back to the beginning of the film where we ha we see he has this moral compass, and mm -hmm. although he is a criminal, he does have like uh, a boundary, you know, mm -hmm. and so. When uh, the hitman co comes around and he, he has trash bags and he's getting ready to, like, uh, I guess clean up the evidence or do something, wipe the scene, he see he looks up and he sees Harry's on the other side of the bed and the, the silencer weapon he had, yeah, you know... Yeah, he had left the gun on the bed. On the bed. And it's closer to Harry and Harry kind of grabs it and, and this guy thinks that he's... I'm assuming he thought he was a pussy and he wasn't going to do anything. He's like, oh, the tough guy's still here, huh? <laughs> oh, you got a gun. I see you're a tough guy. Or you, now you're really tough. And at that point, uh, Harry shoots him once, and he kind of staggers back, like super startled. Mm -hmm. And then he, you know, Harry just guns him down. He falls back on the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the coffee table. There's a glass coffee table. Yep. Updates people on the iPad. <laughs> I was trying to... Yeah, mute it. Mute it, but I'm not sure where. I... We failed to, to mention... I should shout out to the guys who play uh, the two thugs. Because you definitely recognize them. You've seen them before. The uh, the taller white guy is, is uh, Dash Myhawk. Mm -hmm. Who has been in a bunch of stuff. I know him because he's got a, a fairly sizable role in the Thin Red Line. Oh, okay. And he's in uh He's in one of your hated movies. Uh Romeo and Juliet. Oh, okay. He's uh He's one of the Montagues, I believe. But I've only seen that one movie once and that movie is shit too. <laughs> no matter what Diego thinks about it. <laughs> but that's that's Dash My Hawk, the the other guy, the black guy is uh Rockman Dunbar. Who was in Prison Break, which was a good show for exactly one season, and then it was <laughs> terrible after that. And uh, he was also one of the main characters in one of the best one-season cult shows ever, and that was Terriers. Hmm. Oh yeah, he was a uh, police That's detective. That's Ocean Beach. Did you, Ocean Beach? They shot mostly in and around San Diego. Yeah. So I, I want to shout those guys out because they're, they're only in a couple of minutes of the movie, but they're really funny. They have aliases. It's like Mr. Fire and yeah, something uh, else. Yeah, da, uh, Dash My Hawk's trying to say that he's the frying pan. That's right, yeah. And, and Mr. Frying Pan and Mr. Fire. And Mr. Fire. Even though when he says, oh, uh, I'm Mr. Frying Pan, and this is, and Mr. Fire says, oh, I'm... <laughs> I'm mustard. <laughs> and everybody's like, no, Mr. Fire. <laughs> he was trying to make that that uh, analogy. And they just didn't get it because his logic was not making sense. <laughs> so he, he, Harry shoots Mr. Fire and then goes out and he calls Perry. 
to have him come get him. And he's he's really broken up over having killed someone. Yeah. Over having seen the the girl with the pink hair killed and 